All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the fifth day of July in the year of our Lord, 2024. I'm glad last night's over with. My dog spent the night in our bedroom because she's afraid of the noise. A 70-pound German Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> she's not timid about large vehicles and stuff, but... And uh, anybody that gets too close, but when it comes to, you know, they're, they're very, apparently shepherds are mm, attuned to changes in their environment. Anything that's different is considered a threat. If there's a strange car parked down the street, she barks. If the neighbors change or something goes on, someplace changes um, uh, around, she doesn't like it. bit like me. Not exactly like me, though. Okay, I, what I want to talk about, and I know it's been a long time since I did a video, simply because, well, I needed a long break because of the toxic environment you wallow in on the internet and in this world. And this being a political year, as if they're not all political years, an election year in the United States, well, that was something I would rather avoid because the doo-doo is always the deepest on those years. Uh, or I should refer to something else, perhaps, that exists in reality in my yard, because I have chickens. Oh, by the way, anybody else there have chickens and you had a problem with a chicken, a, a, a hen brooding? I mean, they're not, there's no rooster, they're infertile eggs, so... They disrupt, apparently they disrupt the laying pattern of the flock and everything else. Egg production has gone down from, from you suppose it was six to eight a day. Now it's down to three. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to break her of that. Keep picking her up and throwing her out in the yard. Difficult problem, I guess. I don't know. If anybody has any brilliant ideas, uh, I've looked at the ones on the internet. I'm not a chicken expert, but it's like, so this is a little over a year that we've had them now. A year and a half, I guess. Okay, so uh, what's today? Why am I doing this? Well, you can only stay away so long. And the problem is, that the reason this is thinking biblically, because only the, only the Word of God gives us true insight to the situations that we're in. And I want to show you some examples. And what's really going on, and <laughs> really a... a obvious example of, of this is we're being deceived constantly, not just by the politicians and the corporations and society in general and the entertainment se uh, sect and drugs and everything else out there. We're being, and ourselves, we're being deceived constantly by the Satan. His greatest power is lying. Jesus said he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He lies and he blows he has a smoke screen he likes putting up, and I'm going to show you examples of it to keep us from understanding the real problem and the real issues, which go far deeper than anything you'll see in the media that everybody gets their knots and their shorts in a knot over. <laughs> or their kids are knots in a short over. I don't know. <laughs> I guess either one would work in one sense or another. So here is, uh, this is X, formerly Twitter. I understand they have now changed their URL, so it is now actually x.com. One of the more, like Twitter, it's still one of the more toxic spots on the Internet, although I'm not as sure it's as bad as Rumble and worse. 
but basically they are all satanic smoke screens to keep us occupied with things that aren't truly important. It's like those damn cell phones, you know, which I don't even bring out here usually, unless I have a need. So they are a distraction. Although I must say, Apple is not as bad as Android, Google. At least they're not as aggressive with their advertising. <sighs> Google is simply, well, something, the global NSA. It's just far, far bigger than the NSA. It is, it is the new slave market. They buy and sell human lives daily. That's what Google is all about, stealing your life and selling it to others. Think about it. Not just your information, but also influence. They're not content to simply be a forum, are they? No. They're not content. They want to influence you, and they sell influence. You can bet it's, it's not simply ideologues at Google that do what Google does for the Biden administration. No, they're bought and paid for also. They themselves are whores. Selling themselves just like they sell us, whores and pimps. I wonder if that'll get me in trouble on YouTube again. My, my current warning should have expired. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Here we go. So I saw this over on uh, Twitter. It reminded me. Somebody uh, greeted us with the 4th of July thing here. Let's see. Where, where am I? Remember how to do this. Okay. I don't know who this guy is. Uh, looks like Syrian? It, does a Syrian flag have two stars, or is that the... Uh, the um, what else could it be? Iraqi? They all look similar over there. <laughs> and I don't know what that flag is next to it. But uh, it says, Happy 4th of July, America. And does anybody recognize this picture? One of the many uh, pieces of porn that came out of, of the American hellhole known as Abu Ghraib in Afghanistan about American soldiers abusing. Uh, this is one of George W. Bush's torture prisons. It just wasn't a black site like a lot of them. You were outsourced torture to other countries. See, the, the, reason, the, the reason they had Guantanamo, the de 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 detention of Al-Qaeda in Guantanamo, because it's outside to the, continental, the, the boundaries of the United States, even though it's controlled by the United States and hence outside the jurisdiction of the courts. That's why. Because George W. wanted his dirty deeds outside the, the jurisdiction of the United States courts. I saw this, and what, I, what it made me think of is, hey, it's interesting, the, the elite in the United States, American leaders, they can get impeached or in trouble for Petty offenses, relatively petty offenses, like uh, what's his name, uh, Clinton, Bill Clinton. You know, remember the uh, the the sexual things he did with his intern, White House intern. I mean, if, in the scope of things, is it, those personal moral issues they're serious because there's no such thing as a, a compartment a compartmentalized moral failure. If you're immoral, it's you are immoral as a whole. But the actual crimes were nothing, you know, and they tried to get him on, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, false, false testimony. So, and, and then, see, the stupid Republicans set that example, and they went on. But it's just like uh, Nixon. Nixon resigned before he got impeached, technically. Uh, but it was the, the it was of cover up of the, his misdeeds and the misdeeds of his his uh, subordinates his henchmen 
Uh, and Demo uh, leaders often do this. That they will let it known their their desires to underlings and let them do what they want to do. And they don't want to know the details. They don't want to know what they're really up to, so they can deny any responsibility. But Abu Ghraib, this came out publicly. It was exposed. And what happened to George W. Bush? Nada. There's some other countries he will not travel to because there's arrest warrants out for him. But, you know, it's just like the, uh, the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court. Uh, they don't do anything to him because that's controlled. You know, you can always tell American controlled institutions because they don't ever do anything against America. Uh, nothing more, than, at least nothing more than a slap on the wrist or something. They are because we control them. We threaten them. We threaten the individuals. You know, it's the Godfather principle. You know, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. How criminal organizations work, and they certainly work down on the Mexican American border this way. They intimidate people. They go around and say, "We'll, we'll, you know, we'll give you." Uh, $10,000 for turning your eyes away tomorrow to a sheriff or a police officer or whatever. And if you don't do it, we'll come back and we'll rape and murder your wife before your eyes. We'll kill all your children before your eyes. And then we'll kill you slow. It's your choice. That's how it really works. No, the American media does not report what really goes on in the Mexican border. Beheadings, satanic sacrifices of human lives. I lived down there for 10 years. Even the local media doesn't report it. Just like even where I live now, in a, in a little decaying city in East Central Illinois. The media does not report what is distasteful to the local elite, you could say, because they don't want it out there. It, it'll make the community look bad. It'll keep business away. Like, that's, yeah, building that prison outside of town does that too, but, you know, it'll bring jobs. What kind of jobs? It brings all kinds of problems. But you know, the, the people that are in politics are not the brightest of the litter. Anyway, so this, this here, what struck me about this is that that very factor. The, in the United States, those actually responsible for atrocities, war crimes, terrible deeds like genocide, are not the ones that ever get punished for it. They'll go after the individual soldiers. But the that didn't happen after World War II. See, this is, again, the hypocrisy that's not present only in the United States. Let me make this clear. This is a global phenomenon. The, the, in the criminal trials, like Nuremberg and also the trials of the Japanese officials, like the Japanese atrocities that were committed in the Pacific. The, the commanders were executed, even though they might not have had direct knowledge of what their subordinates and their soldiers were doing. The reason being is they have the ultimate responsibility and they set, the create the environment that the soldiers operate in. If they allow that kind of behavior, you know, they, they'll actually they create the situation that that kind of stuff can flourish in. And Abu Ghraib was created by George W. Did he say, "Well, go and torture them like this"? Didn't have to. He created a a, a culture of tolerance toward torture. And was he held accountable for anything? Nada. He's not in prison. He hasn't been executed for his crimes. He's not even under indictment. He hasn't been impeached. I mean, if you can impeach a Trump as an ex-president, you... No. You don't have to impeach an ex-president. You can put him on trial. Of course, now the Supreme Court's official acts 
Well, they should be impeached. Supreme Court uh, justices do not hold their office for life. Go read the Constitution. If they hold their office on good behavior. If they don't behave well, they can be removed. That be good behavior means exercising their office uh, in an appropriate manner, with appropriate wisdom and justice. If they don't do that, they can get tossed by the Congress. So here, uh, so this is a reminder of, you know, obviously somebody did that just to point out, uh, wish us a happy 4th. I haven't celebrated for the 4th of July really since I became a Christian, which was back in 1976. This isn't really my country anymore. My country is the kingdom of God. And the standard that I judge by is his standards, even if I do it poorly. So this is, I happen to have been born in the United States. I live in the United States. I was actually born on a military base in a military hospital. It's like, so my dad wasn't, you know, he had, back then they had the draft. I don't think he was actually drafted, but he had a deferment, and he, uh, well, it was during the Korean, the end of the Korean War, but I think he chose to go, yeah, if you, if you voluntarily went in, you had more control over where you ended up. Didn't do him much good, though. He had a degree in accounting and business manager, uh, managing, just had graduated, and they made him a mailman. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But, yeah, so the America did this. America is an evil empire. It has become an evil empire. You know, the, the old saying that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I don't believe that. It is, it's human beings are corrupt by nature. And when you give them absolute power, it doesn't corrupt them. They just have the freedom to express that evil nature, that fallen nature, without constraints, without fear. Nobody can do anything. They're untouchable, you know? It's, it's like, like the mob. It's like, the you know, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. You can't do anything about it because they'll come back and get you. Everybody's afraid. They rule by fear. That's how Satan rules. He controls everyone through fear. Most of the things they were afraid of are lies, but whatever. So that was one of the things that struck me this morning like this. And here's the other one uh, posted under the same name. Simplic Simplicius? He is um, definitely on the pro-Russian side. I don't know exactly what he is. He's probably Russian. <laughs> Maybe. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. We have to, we have to think, you know. But the, the, this, what this, this meme that he posted, I thought was, was uh, demonstrating the, the ignorance, the, 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 the inability to see themselves. So this is... This is a meme. Let's see. Does it show any more on the on the other? I think that's it. Oh yeah. See, it, it's got actually got two here. Uh, the one side it shows shows this. Have we got two two images. Yeah. Okay. This this is like propaganda from the from the Marxist era. Uh, because Marx was all about class struggle, economic class struggle. Instead of, in the United States, it's about racial class struggle. <laughs> they got you fighting a culture war uh, to stop you from fighting a class war. Well, isn't a culture war and a class war basically the same thing? Wasn't the Soviet Revolution a, class, a culture war, too? A war for the culture? Yeah. So th but this is interesting because then they show, see here you, you've got the proletariat in the, uh, in the animal cage. 
uh, the uh, terrarium, and you've got the uh, the bourgeoisie, the uh, the oligarch, a business tycoon standing there uh, amusingly watching his pets. Well, this is actually Satan, <laughs> biblically speaking here. So it's 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 but the issue that's presented here is the the uh, ruling elite has got you fighting a, a culture war when you should be fighting a class war. <sighs> That's Marxist thinking through and through, but it's, see, it doesn't see the reality of the situation. Obama definitely created, you know, his divide and conquer strategy was identity politics. Identity politics is a form of Marxism. Marxism is about identity politics. Are you a member of the bourgeoisie or are you a member of the proletariat? In other words, are you, are you a member of the owner class, the capitalist class, those that own the means of production, or are you a member of the working class? The middle class is usually lumped in with the uh, bourgeoisie because they are um, supporters, generally, the, the, of the ruling class, the, the uh, owner class, and are the owner class. And Marx would look like, like, like at stock ownership as simply being a sellout. You are contributing to the problem. So there's definitely, but the, the failure to see that culture war and class war are the same thing. Really? Duh. See, this is, this is satanic because it takes the attention off one form of nonsense and just puts it on another form of nonsense. Let's look at the other half of that meme. That Simplic Simplicius had reposted. Introduce them to identity politics. Stop corporate greed. Occupy Wall Street. In other words, here, here's another meme, probably from an American newspaper, perhaps, showing, you know, the, the Wall Street uh, uh, sit-in thing, so-called occupation, where you had a definite uh, challenge to the, the, the economic elite. And so somebody behind the desk is saying identity politics. And who's the one that brought identity politics really in? It was Barack Obama. You ever wonder why a, a professional rabble rouser, uh, a.k.a. A community organizer from the south side of Chicago, suddenly became a state senator and then president of the United States? Well, for the same George W. Bush, a nobody, a failure, uh, even with his daddy's code strings, he couldn't be a success. So somebody said, well, he had ar arbusto oil. Arbusto is simply a, a, a Spanish word for bush. And an arbusto is like a scrub out in the desert. And what he did is he went around to depleted oil fields and oil wells and tried to suck the last drops out of the bottom. <laughs> Somebody could make a, beam, a, 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 a meme out of that. But here, okay, we'll, uh, we'll distract them from challenging us by uh, uh, getting them to fight among themselves. That's how Satan works, by the way, exactly how he works. Distracts us from the real struggle. But the real struggle is not between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie or between white power and black power. It's, this is all distractions that Satan uses to keep us occupied with something that is not the real problem, which is ourselves, which is ourselves. So let's go to, let's see if it'll bring it up. Oh, there it goes. I didn't know if it would catch it. Okay, so this is what Jesus Christ says. This is the real issue. He didn't focus on the, on the owners versus the workers or the slaves versus the free. He said, none of you are free. You're all slaves. Here in John chapter 8 of the Gospel of John, starting in verse 34, Jesus answered them talking to some Pharisees, uh, the most religious segment of the Jewish people, the most seriously religious the, the, the ones that weren't co-opted by the, you know, the, the ruling class was, you yeah, had the Sadducees, the temple, the authorities. The, the Pharisees were the, the local church people. 
and uh, definitely uh, zealots for their cause. The Apostle Paul, who was previously known as Saul, was a Pharisee until Christ grabbed him on the road to Damascus. Persecutor of Christians. Jesus stepped in and asked him, what are you doing? Jesus, as he th see, Paul thought he was serving God, or Saul, thought he was serving God by trying to wipe out this sect of, sect of Christians that was uh, distorting and destroying the Jewish religion. No, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus, and, and he made it known to Paul, personally. Jesus answered them, that the sect of Pharisees that were sort of following him, but also sort of not quite committed to him. And they were, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave of sin, a servant of sin, a slave. You're, you can't set yourself free. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. It's not the owner of the house. Not, it's just, he's just, uh, temp, uh, he's a temp. But a son abides forever because it's the son's house. Therefore, if the son, the son of God, Jesus Christ, makes you free, you shall be free indeed. If the son shall make you free. For true freedom does not come through politics, does not come through uh, philosophy, it does not come through economics. Your real slavery is your slavery to sin. You were born into a fallen race that is a slave of sin. Think of the movie, um, what was the name of that movie? Matrix. That's a bit of a, that's a halfway decent analogy. Halfway decent, at the beginning. It goes downhill from there. But nevertheless, the idea that, that we are deceived by the illusions of this world around us. Uh, Satan creates his smoke and he keeps us distracted. The scripture is very clear. He is at work in the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience are not disobedient children as opposed to obedient ones. Those are the children of Adam. We're all born into the race of Adam. Adam was the first man. He fell and all his children fell with him. So we're born into a fallen race, and that fall consists primarily of separation from God. We were created to be the temples, the dwelling place of God, his avatars, to use another movie, uh, in this world. His presence in his people, he, uh, so it's not God separated from creation by this like the, the theologians want. They want God, the God of Aristotle, completely removed, the, the theistic God, the deistic God. And he's separated. He can't interact. He can't speak. He can't do anything. He can't know anything other than what he's determined. You know, the, the Calvinist God. That's not the God of the Bible. That's my, maybe the God of Aristotle, but Aristotle didn't really believe in that God anyway. No, the, the God the God that we believe in as Christians is the God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He entered into this world because Christ is God uh, and, be, and became a man. So Christ is called, called himself the son of man. He is the second Adam, the progenitor of a new race. That's why you must be born again, born from above, literally, born a second time. First time, as, John, as Jesus says in John chapter 3, you're born of the water. You're born na naturally. It's not baptism. It's natural birth. Born out of water is natural birth. It is not being immersed in water. I don't know how many people can't understand the scripture. It's very clear in the context. And to be, but he said, you have to be born of the spirit. So one is first born of the flesh, naturally, son of a daughter or son of Adam, and then you must be born again as a son of God. To, to, to remove that, uh, see, as the race of Adam, we are at antipathy. We are at war with God. We are estranged from God. 
But in Christ, Christ dying on the cross removed that problem from God's side. Because of what Christ did, dying for the sins of the entire world, the Calvinists got this completely wrong again. They say, oh, no, he only died for the elect. He died for everyone. But his death for everyone does not automatically mean that you're, you're reconciled to him. It means as far as God's concerned, you, can, you, are, you have been reconciled as far as your sin. He's taken care of that. He's paid the price for that. But now you must accept it. You must accept his salvation. Or you can resist. You can close your ears to it. As the writer of the Hebrews says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. God calls and you answer. You can't, you know, people don't call out to God until God begins to work in them. But a lot of people, God begins that work and they reject it. They go off and continue to serve themselves. They just, just don't want it. They, because they're not really, they're not concerned about their sinfulness. They're not concerned about their separation from God. They're not, they haven't bought, um, really seen what they are. They haven't seen the problem lies within them. You know, the problem isn't, Biden, even, even the problem really isn't even Satan, because if you weren't fallen, he couldn't touch you. He couldn't deceive you. Just like he couldn't deceive Jesus, who was born a man, fully man, but without sin. He didn't walk this earth as God Almighty. He walked this earth as a man. Doesn't mean he wasn't God. It's just he he walked as a as a human being. He didn't do his miracles out of his own divine power. He walked as God's uh, uh, as what man is supposed to be in harmony with God. It doesn't matter how much personal power you are. If you have, if you are in harmony with God, you have then and God and you and if you're seeking to do the will of God. Then you have all the power of God. As Jesus said, if anyone says to this mountain and has, and has true faith, faith that is God's will, be caught up and cast into the sea, it will obey you. Why? Because the power of God is behind it. You're just God's agent. Which is what we're supposed to be. But you have to be reconciled with God. And even then, because even as, as regenerate, born-again Christians, we still have sin dwelling in our mortal bodies. We're, our bodies haven't been redeemed yet. So don't go off and get into sinless perfectionism or something like that. The Scripture says anybody does that, they've deceived themselves. First John. I think it's first chapter of 1 John. You know, there's people who think, I have no sin. Yes, you do. You've deceived yourself, or you, and you've been deceived. Therefore, if the Son shall make you free, free from being a slave of sin, you shall be free indeed. And you shall abide in God's house forever, rather than being cast out. All right, so let's get back to, to this. So that this we have had this meme here, which the, the confusion of the... See, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's left and right, it's communist, or uh, what should we call it? Atheistic capitalist materialism versus atheist socialist materialism. Same thing. It's all the smoke of Satan to keep you off the real issue, which is your relationship with God. That's what's important. And you can only have a relationship with God, a real relationship through faith in Jesus Christ, in his person. Not some church, not some organization, not some man claiming to be the vicar of Christ. Only Christ himself can save you. He's the only one who is God. You need a relationship with God. And I'd like to get back to something that seems to be more important than ever. Back in the end of the 60s through the first half of the 70s, there was something that occurred uh, commonly referred to as the Jesus Revolution. And, of course, Americans think it only happened in America, but that's just nonsense. It was definitely... See, there was the same kind of thing going on in Europe. Uh, this happens repeatedly through history. Uh, there was 
something going on like the hip the hippie movement was going on in Germany uh, in the decades following the First World War. Uh, they talked about the youth having wanderlust and you had an explosion of pornography and an explosion of cocaine and other drugs. drugs. Uh, Berlin was the center of the cultural world, utterly decadent. Pornography, nudity, everything was right there. And uh, society was breaking down. You had the the, the communist elements versus the the uh, the conservative. Actually, the, mil the military veterans were the other side, pretty much being used by the industrialists. Um, and it was a mess. But they didn't think it was a mess. There was a height. Height. The uh, science was, the epitome of science was science wasn't in Paris. It was in Berlin. That's where the first discovery of atomic energy occurred. Uh, most of the atomic scientists, like Einstein and others that ended up in the United States, came from there. Uh, <clears throat> what happened? What happened to Germany? Things got tough. And they grasped at straws, and they grasped at a straw named Adolf Hitler. Somebody with a big mouth promising them everything and blaming it on everybody else. Does that happen in the United States? Yeah, it does. Those people historically have been called demagogues, uh, which is another name for community organizer, come to think of it. Uh, people that would go out and use rhetoric and promise everything to roll up the, the masses and... Uh, Going back to Athens, supposedly the first democracy. So we've been sold a bill of goods, a pig and a poke. Democracy is not an end in itself. It's just a means of government. And it doesn't work very well because you can manipulate people. See, the so-called founding fathers were disciples of John Locke, which was a new ideology, by the way. Enlightenment thinking. It was that was very recent, and we know where philosophy is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Philosophy is dead. And there's a whole path we could go through that would explain why philosophy died. They came to realize, see, originally philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, others, thought that you could arrive at truth out of yourself. You didn't need external revelation. You didn't need an authority above above man. You could just figure it out. Well, it didn't work. And over the centuries, people, other philosophers came up with reasons and explanations of, no, it can't work. You, can, you can't derive truth out of nothing. It, it can't look within and come up with truth. Uh, it, it, there's problems with that whole thing. There's just like there's philosoph uh, philosophical problems with, that invalidate the scientific method as a way of discovering truth with a capital T. You can discover how things, the appearance of how things work, but you can uh, discover the reality itself. Uh, scientific method, uh, empiricism, is not is it may be useful, but you can't prove things with it. I, I've personally run into that problem quite often where you have insufficient data to establish even a level of probability of having the correct answer? Uh, yeah, <laughs> there are problems. It's like polls, opinion polls, totally invalid. Uh, you can determine the outcome of a poll by how you ask the question and, of course, who you sample or, and don't sample. So that's uh, you can't. That's a scientific method, and, but it, it does. It's not reliable. It, you can't determine truth, and it doesn't really matter what people think, because they won't think the same thing tomorrow as they think today. They can be can change in a moment, and your opinion isn't absolute truth. That's a problem. That, that's an atheistic idea. Uh, existentialism, first of all, is nihilism. Nihilism, which arose largely at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the, of the 20th, I think uh, Nietzsche might be the, the best known example of it, is a, it, was a philosophy that says you can't know anything. We can't know the truth. Uh, everything is subjective. We have, there is no, perhaps as far as we're concerned, there is no absolute truth out there to know. See, it's a complete denial of the existence of God. Just a denial of the existence of God. 
and then that was followed by existentialism that were nihilists but said, you know, the only rational thing to do is commit suicide then because we're just absurdities. So let's end our miserable existence so we don't suffer anymore, sort of, sort of a mm, perverted Buddhism almost. And then, uh, then, then the existentialists said, well, yeah, but we have to go on anyway. Tough it out. Make your own reality. Create your own values. And look where we're today. People create their own genders where there aren't any. What's my gender? I'm sandpaper. I'm a video camera. I'm chicken leg bands. Bunch of stuff on random stuff on my desk here. Somebody's thinking, why do you have chicken leg bands on this desk? Because I got chickens. I had to mark one of them the other day. How can I identify which one is the one that's causing me problems? So I don't. I've got. I've got five. I've got two different variants of the same breed. Wine dots. And one of them set is silver. In other words, they're white and uh, white and black. And the other ones are uh, golden, and they are uh, like a brown and black. So I've got five of those ones. And one of them's causing me the trouble. So I have to identify her, lest I you know, deal with her alone. I don't want to punish the whole flock. Uh, but right now, they're being, that's what's happening. I've got them all locked out of the, the hen house. Um, they'll, be, they'll be locked out. In the, they have the run in the, in the garden yard out there that they're access to. So they've got their chicken run. And they can be out there. And they got food and water and scrounging around the weeds for bugs and stuff until noon. I am trying to keep the one from roosting all the time. She'll do it every chance she gets. I'm trying to break her of it. Like, mm. Next up is chicken jail. Confinement with probably light therapy. All kinds of ideas people have for limiting that problem. But. Okay, that's why I've got chicken leg bands on my desk. But back to the thing. See, see, the real issue, the real issue with humanity is sin and a, a, a not a proper relationship with God. Estrangement from God. That's what sin is. It's, it's not about sinful acts. It's about the not being in a proper relationship with God. The acts flow out of that. They're not the root of the problem. And we're born into this sin. We're born, born a sinner does not mean you're born guilty of particular acts. It doesn't mean you're guilty of what Adam did. It means you have the consequences on you of what Adam did. And God, in his justice and fairness, had Christ died for the sins, Christ died for the sins of the whole world, for all sin in order that, and God's desire is that all men be saved, all human beings be saved, and re be restored to a proper relationship with him, in order that you can be what you were created to be. His dwelling place, his agents in creation. What Christ was on earth, that's how he lived, the way Adam was supposed to be. As the scripture says, he's a second Adam. First one failed. First one was deceived by Satan. That's what Satan is doing. He's deceiving us with all these other things. All of, almost all of society is society. That, well, let, let's go to another scripture here. Let's go to a, another scripture. This is 1 John. Just a fragment of First John. If I start reading a, a long text, well, then we'll get distracted. It says, we know that we are of God, talking about God's people, God's children, Christians, true Christians. Not just the apostles, not just the Jews. We know that we are of God and the whole world, the whole world, the whole, the cosmos. This is, see, in, in John, John writes in chapter 3, quoting Jesus, uh, or it says, and God so loved the world. The world there is, the word there is cosmos, too. 
you know, we use the word cosmos, cosmetology. Uh, it, the, 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 the order, it means the arrangement of things. When it's about creation, it's God's arrangement of things. And the creation has been perverted by human beings, too, so the arrangement is not what it's supposed to be. It's been perver uh, twisted by sin. First sin wasn't human sin, it was Satan. The rebellion of Satan and those that followed him. He led the first revolution. Failed to overthrow the government, he got exiled, kicked out. We know that we are of God, and the whole world, the whole cosmos, with a K, lies under the sway or the power. It literally, literally what it says, under the sway of, is in italics there. Uh, the New King James, like the King James, and a few others, but not all Bibles, when they insert words in English to try to help clarify the Greek, they traditionally put them in italics to know, not that they're more important, but they're not present in the original text. Literally says lies, or I would translate that word as like reclines in the wicked one, which is Satan, in the evil. King James would say the wicked, but it is uh, a personification. It's a definite article, so it's not simply, it, it, well, it can mean two different things. It can mean, uh, uh, but it, it, it's referring here to Satan direct, directly. In the larger context, it's pretty clear. <clears throat> so this is the status that we're born into. This is the way the world is. And Satan controls everything. And Jesus said he was a liar from the beginning. And John talks about that in First John too, that he's, he lies. And that's how he controls us. He lies. He doesn't generally execute, uh, exercise physical control over us. He controls us through lies. And has worked to set up structures that enable him to do that better. Why do you think Elon Musk is creating this, his whole constellation of satellites up there? Other than the United States military is backing him up too. You really think that a private individual would be allowed to do what he's doing if he wasn't in the pocket of the, the authorities and the government? Sometimes he's a little resists that, a little resistant to it, but he's in a pocket. You can't launch, you know, the EPA wouldn't let somebody paw, uh, pour out all those toxins that he does at every launch of his, his toys. Those are not for his personal use. Those are government projects privatized. Go back to George W. again. The privatization of government and military. And it's another smokescreen. See, the, the, uh, the, we don't need constellations of Internet servers in orbit. We don't. The Internet is not worth the money it costs. It's not essential to humanity at all. It causes more trouble than anything else. But those are, the, the, uh, the military probably realized uh, quite a few years ago that the military satellites that they had in orbit are relatively few in number, and they're vulnerable. So what if we put up 10,000 satellites all linked together? Redundancy on a massive scale. And there's satellites constantly coming into every location on Earth. They're very annoying if you take astrophot uh, astrophotographs because you get these streaks through your pictures all the time. Satellites, not airplanes, they're annoying too. But yeah, you're taking a 30 minute exposure and you get all this garbage. Meteorites sometimes too. But this is, this is a military project. It is not a civilian project. There are no civilian space programs. That's cover for the real purpose. It's like Hubble. Uh, the Hubble satellite, uh, a space telescope, was nothing but a modified uh, NSA spy satellite. I mean, it used basically the same mirror. It was, it was just, huh, cover 
for what they do. You know, you, gotta, you have to create some pretty pictures, and they were created, photoshopped, definitely photoshopped, heavily photoshopped. Not that there weren't real images behind them, but if you actually look at in the archives and look at the real images of the famous uh, pillars of creation, for example, by the way, amateur uh, telescopes, small amateur telescopes, approximate that quite well <laughs> with, with like a three or four inch lens. So it's like, it's not that much better. How many billions? See, it's, it's distractions. Keep people distracted. Uh, in the Roman Empire, it was, uh, what did the emperors use? Bread and circuses, welfare, bread, free bread, for the the what was called the mob of Rome, and the the uh, the games in the Colosseum to distract the people, and the free baths, bathhouses, and everything they had, distractions to keep them happy, to keep them peaceful, to keep them compliant of all the benefits they were getting from the state, at least until the next uh, <clears throat> imperial change, or until some disgruntled, until the imperial guard got disgruntled and assassinated the, the emperor, or the senate assassinated the emperor, or whatever. Pretty unstable place. Keep them distracted. What do you think? Well, Hollywood, Hollywood serves Satan, keeps us distracted with junk, makes murder into entertainment. I, I, am, I mean, just if you analyze what they're, they're feeding you, you should understand where it comes from. Make it taking murder. So that what, one of the most popular fairs on television uh, in uh police shows or whatever. It's murder. It's murder and the solving of murder, but murder being presented constantly. Do you think that desensitizes you? Of course it does. Your emotions are being constantly artificially triggered. That's what drugs do, you know, uh, any, any psychoactive drug. You're being stimulated, and your response, you get your gener getting uh, your body's being triggered to, to produce emotional response responses, but without a connection to reality. Movies, there's no real connection to reality, it's just images. Porn, it's images that trigger responses that aren't connected to reality. You're being manipulated by smoke. That's how Satan works. So all this stuff about this epic struggle between the East and the West, it's all smoke. As I said, what is the real difference between Democrat? Of course, all the Eastern European countries since the Communist Revolution always referred to themselves as democratic socialist states. They had elections, just like we have elections here. Satan chooses the candidates, and you get to choose one of the candidates he's chosen for you. It creates the appearance of choice, not a reality of choice. You don't get to choose God's candidates. Or if you do choose to vote for Jesus Christ, they don't count it. And they don't pay attention. They go, oh, some crazy person wrote in the name of Jesus. I did that one time. The only one worthy of rule is Christ. The only one, we'll never have freedom in this world and peace until he returns. And we're living in the times immediately prior to his return. People say, oh, you don't know that. Well, I'll tell you what, given all the information we have, humanity will not last another hundred years. Uh, that's that's saying even if a, a nuclear war does not happen or something worse, a man-made pandemic does not happen, or you know they create a virus that eats everything, if that doesn't happen. No, just the facts that the population has exceeded the carrying capacity of the planet, and we're living on stored reserves. God put 
the fossil fuels in the ground for today. That we would have sufficient energy for things. I see China, who is not nearly as stupid as the United States, has decided that they've just always started the, their first thorium-based power plant. Yeah, the United States has known about thorium reactors for a long time, played with them a little bit, and rejected them because they didn't produce the plutonium for their nuclear bombs. Thorium is much safer and much more abundant than uranium. Much more abundant. What a, what a, the thing I said, they said that China's got enough thorium in their known reserves for 20,000 years of energy. We're idiots in the United States. Because we're even, we have no long-term understanding at all. We think we're the greatest and the smartest. We're not. We're not at all. The Amer America's time as the hegemon of the world is finished. It's over. It's over. And just because the people in power can't reconcile themselves to that fact. We need to be turned back to America and try to fix what's wrong here. And the fundamental problem is the fact that people are ungodly. You don't get that right, you can't fix it, because that is the source. The fallenness of humanity is the source of all the real problems that we have in this world. It's not a lack of resources. It's, and the fundamental manifestation of that fallenness is self-centeredness and the selfishness that goes with that. We put ourselves above everything, one way or another. Some people conceal that somewhat, but it's still there. We need to be, our, 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 our nature, the corruption of our nature is due to the absence of God in us. We were designed to have God dwelling in us. And without that, we can't have true purpose. We can't be what we're supposed to be. We can't do anything that is truly good. Because as Jesus says, only God is good. Good in an absolute sense. Good as a source of goodness. We can't source that out of ourselves. Because by ourselves, we're empty Useless temples with no God present. Without God, we can't do anything. So there's the real nature of the problem and the real cause of slavery, the real slavery. It's the fact that we can only find true freedom in Christ. But Satan keeps us all confused. It's like the, the uh, victims of American slavery in this country, supposed victims, you're a victim because of the color of your skin, you know, or, a, or a, um, a perpetrator because of the color of your skin. Whether or not your family was in this country or not doesn't make any difference to them because it's class warfare, identity politics, same thing again. The real problem is within you. And that's what has to be fixed. And you can f have that fixed by God. He already provided the solution in Jesus Christ on the cross. And... He desires you to be come into that relationship with him, but it's only in through faith in Jesus Christ. How do you do it? Start by calling out, recognize the problem, and call out to God to save you. Salvation's God's work, not you. You can't earn it, you can't buy it, you can't make it happen. But you can cry out to God to make it happen. He already bought it for you.